Are Toronto condo units selling for 200K less than what they were initially purchased for so far within the Toronto real estate market and condo market in 2024? And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I'm referring to stories such as this one, where there are examples of units selling for around 150, 200K less. For instance, in this Block T article, as we see Toronto apartments sold at significant loss shows just how turbulent the market is. And you can read the article for yourself. And there are many articles such as this. And funny enough, with modern media nowadays, the article just refers to a tweet, which is you know kind of uh, funny to me. But nonetheless, this tweet, which it refers to, shows to us a unit in Markham, I believe, a two bedroom, two washroom, one parking spot unit that was recently in March of 2024, sold for $653,000. But the most recent sale before that, so the people who sold it at $650,000, as you guys can see from the history here, the purchase price was around $868,000. So in today's video, I'm gonna expand a little bit upon how this is factual and true, but where it can be a bit misleading and lead to exaggerations. And all while discussing this, as you guys know me from this channel, I keep it 100% with you guys, give you the facts, the pros and the cons. I'm neither a real estate bull or a bear. I don't believe in that dichotomy. I just believe in the facts and I'm a, quite a moderate individual. So we're gonna go through all the facts and tell you what's really happening with regards to the Toronto condom market. But before we get into all that though, if you're not familiar with who I am, my name is Sam, a Toronto real estate agent actively working across the Toronto real estate market. You're watching Sibiri 6 Real Estate, my YouTube channel. On this channel, we like to discuss everything having to do with the Toronto real estate market, market stats, market reports, buyer advice, seller advice, condo reviews, area analysis, property tours of what I've bought and sold, so much more. So if you find any of this content enjoyable, subscribe, comment, and like. Furthermore, it's easier than ever to get in touch with me with my contact information in the description box. I was just on the screen and now there's a link where you can book a call get to know me chat with me with any buying or selling inquiries so the example we just go through and there are tons of examples if you're ever on real estate reddit or toronto real estate reddit rather or toronto real estate twitter you see these examples of bought at this price sold at this price bought at this price sold at this price and to me whether you are a a positive individual who's very optimistic about the future of the Toronto real estate market or someone who's very negative on the future of Toronto real estate market. These single data entry points, whether you're showing a $200,000 gain or $200,000 loss, to me are really a disappointing excuse for quote unquote analysis. It's just, you know, how Sigma screenshots, how Sigma screenshots only get you so far. They're the bottom of the barrel and I understand why people do them. They get the clicks, they get the views and it's very, very low effort. To me, it doesn't even tell you why it's happening, what it means, if it's, you know, out of context, if it's in context. So, so, so let's take a closer look at this exact example. And before And after we do that, I'm gonna talk about the market at low so this exact example, once again, let's take a look at it. We see that the property was initially purchased for around $868,000, leased for $3,500, and then just sold for six fifty. dollars And that is nearly a 210, 200K loss. There's no ifs or ands or buts about that, but let's take a closer look at the dates of these transactions. When the unit was initially purchased, it was purchased in February of 2022. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a long time, I've been making videos since 2019, but I've been taking you guys through the ups and downs of the market, and I'm telling you, and the long time viewers should know by now, the all time peak of the history of the Toronto and GTA real estate market. And that's no exaggeration. Legitimately, the history of the Toronto and GTA real estate market, the all time, all time peak was February of 2022. Prices have never been higher. Market conditions have never been as uh, volcanic. That is the single point on the line graph if you want to draw the highest apex of the Toronto and GTA real estate market. So, so this purchase literally occurred at the utmost highest point in the history of the Toronto real estate market. To give you a little bit more context about that, let's take a look at the numbers a little bit closely. In February of 2022, the average sold price for a Toronto condo across the entire Toronto area, as north as North York, as down as downtown, as east as Scarborough, as west as Etobicoke, and everything else in between, the average sold price, this is the average sold price, was $822,000. Now, at the most recent time we have access to, I mean, the most recent month in full we have access Access to which is April, May has not ended at the time of recording of this video. The average sold price for the same exact area, the 416 Toronto proper, 
stands at $766,000. So clearly prices are substantially down from the time this purchase occurred. Furthermore, it's not just about prices, it's about how people are buying them. Part of the reason the prices were being pushed up so much during this time, and not just for condos, every other property type, were the bidding war. And during this time, and I'm speaking from the selling side because I made a lot of good sales during this time, listings were being artificially underpriced for offer night, receiving anywhere for condos, three to seven offers in some cases. I even saw 11 to 12 offers. For freehold detached properties, upwards of 20 offers. And selling unconditional, so firm, with extremely seller-friendly terms and conditions, putting aside the price even. That's not happening right now. That, in fact, it's a buyer's market. That's why I'm working with buyers mainly right now and I've just made four purchases in the last month with really buyer-friendly conditions and terms and really market conditions at large as well being extremely buyer-friendly. So yes, this 200K obviously occurred, the number's not a lie, but it can mislead you into thinking that Toronto condos are selling at 200K losses left and right. That is not the case. This is a example of really uh, bad timing in terms of buying during the peak of the market and selling in more down market. And that's what we're experiencing right now. You know, the spring of 2024 right now so far is still higher in price than fall of 2023. But spring to spring, spring of 2024 has been very disappointing compared to spring of 2023, compared to obviously spring of 2022. So although the market right now is like up one to 2% from fall of 2023 and January of 2024, it's still considered a moderate market for condos at best, if not more so a buyer friendly market. Putting aside the peak time purchase and right now the more moderate to down market sale, depending on location of course, the Toronto condo market has been quite actually consistent, right? It has been declining, but really to the tune of one to 3% in most cases. Since the interest rate hikes occurred shortly after the purchase in February of 2022, the market dropped. And really when we take a look at the historical bottom of the market, particularly with condos was October, November, 2022. Since October, November, 2022, there was a healthy resurgence in spring of 2023. And really since spring of 2023, the market has just been declining once again to the tune of one to 3%. So we're not talking about 200K losses. For most people who've purchased, and this is the really key point here, for, the, for most people who have purchased in the last one to three years, once again, this is very generalized, very, very generalized, uh, putting aside unit type, location, building, your financial situation, look, all that. Most people will be looking at more so a loss of, I would say, fifteen to $30,000 if they were to sell, if they've purchased in the last three years, as opposed to a loss of 200K. So this is why I mean, I'm very nuanced and I try to really give you the most you know, intricate position. I am saying 200K losses are exaggerated and that's not happening across the market and don't expect that to happen. If you come across that as a buyer, that's fantastic for you. If you come across that as a seller, that's unfortunate for you, but it's not common whatsoever. But the opposite of that is not saying, hey guys, everything is okay. No, losses are happening, but more so to the tune of 10 to 30,000. Once again, largely depending on area and location and building quality and unit type. To get a little bit more even detailed, let me share with you guys what I shared in my exclusive WhatsApp group chat prior to making this video. By the way, if you want to join my exclusive WhatsApp group chat, the link is in the description. First access to stats, market reports, the research I do for clients, and these videos as well. As I shared in my exclusive WhatsApp group chat, you can check this chart below. Compares Q1 of 2023 to Q1 of 2024. And as we can see, comparing just purely Q1 to Q1, prices are down. There's no doubt about it. Although, interestingly enough, not in Peel and Durham. I'll get to that shortly. But for the most part, Toronto proper, York Region, Trebwide, prices are down but not substantially. Treb wide, which is for our purposes, GTA wide, prices are only down 3,000. Toronto wide, 3,000. A little bit more in York region. And Durham and Peel are up. Uh, interestingly enough, Durham, and I've been seeing this on the ground working with buyers in the Pickering area, for instance, waterfront Pickering area, uh, some of the buildings, newer buildings, are performing much better, higher than what's normal for the market, I think having to do with the really low per square foot prices and the location of those buildings. So I'm actually seeing the fact that Durham is up, at least with regards to Pickering, and in some cases would be on the ground as well. Peel is up marginally like $1,000 in average sold price. That's nothing, that's break even to me. Uh, nonetheless, though, we see that, yes, prices are down, no doubt about that, but very marginally. And this is what you can expect to see if the Bank of Canada does not cut interest rates. The next meeting is June 5th. After, after that, I believe it's July and September. 
for the sake of this uh, thought experiment, let's say the Bank of Canada doesn't touch it for the next meetings, you could expect prices to decline, but not once again, 15% crashes, 10% crashes, even if you want to call that crash, you can expect prices to decline maybe one to 2%, 3% in a very, very marginal and moderate fashion. If the Bank of Canada does decide to cut interest rates, that's a different uh, discussion for a different video. Anyways, that is it for today's video. If you found this video enjoyable and informative, feel free to subscribe, leave your comments or questions in the comments. Join my exclusive WhatsApp group chat for reports. And that's it for now. See you next time.